What's up everybody? Welcome to lecture 19, which is all over section 3.7. Um, before I get into this first example, just want to explain a little bit about what this, this section is about. It's about this idea of optimization. So how can we take an idea and find the best or worst solution for this issue? Um, in other words, we're just applying calculus to figure out what the biggest or smallest possible answers are. What that means for you is that this is going to be one of the most important chapters or sections in this class for you, the student. And I say that because optimization gets used in literally every field. Every field uses it. Um, industrial engineers, you might want to optimize the uh, a box in some sense. Um, maybe not something so trite or trivial, but you could apply it to apply this to the idea of optimizing a box. In fact, we have that problem in our notes. Um, computer scientists, this is going to show up in a lot of different problems you might have to solve. Um, engineers of all sorts, you just go ahead and accept that you're going to have to solve optimization problems at different points in your career, including in academia. Um, chemists, same thing. Optimizing mixing rates is a pretty common area. Um, whom else? Biologists, there's all sorts of different optimization problems you might run into. Um, yeah, literally if you're in a STEM field, this is one of those important chapters you do not want to miss, or sections that you do not want to miss. Having said that, this section is largely just going to be about examples because it's about a way of thinking. It's about the way you use the tools we've talked about up to this point in real life to solve different problems. To start off with, we've got this example here where we got a river that runs along some farmer's property. The farmer says, all right, I have 2,400 feet of fencing that I want to put up against this river in such a way that I can optimize the area inside of that fencing between it and the river. So we're only going to have three sides of our fence. The fourth side that would traditionally be there is just going to be the river. So our fence is just going to be these three sides and it's going to have a total length of 2,400 feet. And what we want to do is optimize the area inside of that. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, I've already got a few things written down that we can take advantage of. First step, we want to name our variables. So we're going to name these two adjacent sides, or two opposite sides, rather, to be of length x and this top to be of length y. Well, we know that what we're optimizing is the area. And since this is going to be a rectangle, then we know that area is going to be equal to x times y. That's the area of a rectangle. No big surprise there. Now, the next thing is to say, well, we know we're limited by the perimeter of this fence. This fence has to have maximum perimeter of 2,400 feet. Well, that perimeter is going to be equal to the sum of all the sides, the, the sum of the length of all the sides. So that's just going to be 2x plus y. And I argue this is where we can start working things out. So first, what is it we want to optimize? Well, the answer to that question is the area enclosed 
Is it close spelled with an I or an E? An E. I think it's an E. I don't know. There's an old cliche about mathematicians not being able to spell. I am not going to break that cliche. I, yeah, I, I can spell sometimes, but words and I are not so good with. So, getting back to the problem, what we're going to do, we're going to optimize the area enclosed, and the way we're going to do it is by maximizing it. Okay, next, the question is, what do we know? Well, we know that the area is equal to x times y, and that the perimeter is 2,400 feet, which is equal to 2x plus y. Now, how can we use this to optimize area? Well, if we're trying to maximize the area, we could apply the derivative, set that derivative equal to zero, and try to find out if that's the max or the min, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, after all, literally what we were just talking about in those last videos, using derivatives to identify max and mins of all sorts of different sorts, right? But that area function doesn't look nice. It's in terms of x and y. So why don't we, pun intended, get rid of y? How are we gonna do that? Well, we can do that by using this perimeter function. We could solve for y here and substitute that back in. So to do that, we'll look something like this. y is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to 2,400 minus 2x. Now we can substitute that into here. Which gives us that area is equal to 2,400 x minus 2 times x squared. So when we take the derivative of area with respect to x, that's going to maximize or minimize area in terms of x, right? Well, here, looking at this, we've got a parabola that's concave down. So we're dumping everything down on the floor, right? It's concave down. We know just from what we know about algebra that that derivative set to zero is going to give us a max. So just looking at the algebra alone, we're able to figure out what that derivative would be. So uh, as far as being a max or a min. So taking the derivative now, dA dx is equal to, well, the derivative on our first term is just 2,400 minus the derivative on our second term, which is just going to be 4x. We need to set this thing equal to 0. Well, lucky for us, both terms share a common factor of 4, so we can pull that out. And when we do, this gives us 
600 minus x is equal to 0. In other words, the maximum that x can be is going to be 600. So we can come back over here and say x needs to be 600. Well, y is equal to 2,400 minus 2x. So that means y is going to be equal to 1,200. And that's our answer. That's it. That's all we're doing with this. That one's kind of quick and easy, actually. And that's the way these problems work. With the optimization problems, what you want to do is you first want to identify what the question is even asking you. What is it you're optimizing? Area enclosed by maximizing it. Okay, cool. So what do you know? Well, we know that the area of a rectangle is equal to x times y, and we know what the perimeter has to be. So now, from there, the third step is just using what you know to answer that question. That's it. That is all this chapter is about, or all this section is about. That said, this is something that you're going to have to learn by doing, honestly. I, mean, I wish there was a better way of teaching this particular material, but it's honestly just learn by doing. So for that reason, this video is just going to be a bunch of examples. Um, it's going to be a bunch of examples of us saying, all right, what is it we're trying to optimize? What do we know? Let's do it. That's it. That, that's all we're doing. Um, so having said that, let's check out another example. So in the second example, what we're trying to do is minimize the cost of making a barrel while preserving the volume within that barrel. In other words, to answer the question of what and how, what we're going to do is we are going to minimize the cost of the barrel by trying to minimize the amount of surface area of, of metal we're using. So we're going to minimize the surface area of that barrel. And what we know is that this barrel has to contain 1,000 cubic centimeters of whatever liquid. So the second part, we know that volume is equal to pi r squared times h, and that has to be equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. Now, to figure out why volume is equal to pi r squared times h, the barrel has a height of h and a radius of r. So you can think of it as extruding the area through that height, right? That's going to give you the volume. But we also know that the surface area of that barrel is going to be the bottom of the barrel, the top of the barrel, plus the outside sheet of metal that gets wrapped to make that, that body, right? So what this is going to come out to be is the area of the bottom of the barrel, that is pi r squared, plus the area of the top of the barrel, again, pi r squared, plus the surface area of the body, which is going to be the height times the length. Well, the length of that sheet metal is just the circumference of that barrel, right? So that's 2 pi r, giving us that the surface area for the body is just going to be height times 2 pi r. In other words, the surface area is pi r squared plus pi r squared, so 2 pi r squared, 
plus 2 pi r times h. Now writing that down. We know the surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times h. Okay, well, if what we're trying to do is minimize the surface area, then we need to take the derivative of the surface area somehow. But the surface area is a function in terms of r and h here, so we need to get rid of h. And we can do that by rewriting that volume in terms of h, right? So that volume was 100,000, my mistake, was 8,000 cubic centimeters. So that means h has to be equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters divided by pi r squared. So h is equal to 1,000 divided by pi r squared. Now we can substitute this into our surface area to get that as a function of r. And that tells us that our surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 1,000 divided by pi r squared. Well, we have some cancellations here. While we're at it, we, well, yeah, let's just go ahead and cancel everything else, or everything else. That's going to give us 2 pi r squared plus our pi and our r is going to cancel to give us 2,000 over r. And all I did was multiply the 1,000 by the 2, right? Now we can take a derivative. We can take a derivative with respect to r to get ds dr is equal to, this is going to come out to be 4 pi r plus, well, the derivative of 2,000 over r is negative 2,000 over r squared. So why don't we actually make that minus 2,000 over r squared. When we set this equal to 0, we get that 4 pi r has to be equal to 2,000 over r squared. Yes, I just skipped a step. If you're not sure what step it is, stop and think about what's happening here. And we just took the derivative, and we're trying to minimize the surface area. So we took the derivative of the surface area with respect to r. Try to minimize the surface area. Well, to minimize that, that means you have to look for a max or a min, right? In this case, you have to look for a min. And to look for mins, we like to set our derivatives equal to zero. Or for max is that for that matter. Like if we're trying to optimize a function by finding its max or its min, we just like to take the derivative, set that derivative equal to zero. Well, once we do that, we can move this term, 2,000 over r squared, to the other side to get 4 pi r is equal to 2,000 over r squared. Now multiply both sides by r squared and divide both sides by 4 pi. That gives us r cubed is equal to 2,000 divided by 4 pi, which you can rewrite as 500 over pi, implying that r is equal to the cubed root of 5,000 over pi. And now, 
we can come back to this equation to find out what H is. So we know R is equal to the cubed root of 500 divided by pi. And then from there, like I said, we're just going to plug it back in to that solution for H to find out what H is. And that's it. That's all there is to this problem. Uh, having said that, if you all have any questions, obviously feel free to shoot me an email. Um, but we're going to look at one more example. Okay, so for this example, I'm just going to set this problem up, and then I want you all to do it on your own. For this problem, what we've got is the equation y squared is equal to 2x. We want to find the point along the graph of that equation that is closest to the point 1, 4. So what that means, then, is that we want to minimize the distance between the point 1, 4 and the graph of y squared equal to 2x. We want to find the point along that graph that will minimize that. So we need to find the xy value along this graph that minimizes the distance between it and 1, 4. Okay. Well, what we know is the equation of this graph is y squared equal to 2x. And we know the distance between any two points is just going to be d squared is equal to the difference in their x values squared plus the difference in their y values squared. Or in this case, we know one of the points is 1, 4. So we know the distance between our point 1, 4 and any point along the graph of this equation can be rewritten as d squared is equal to the quantity x minus 1 squared plus the quantity y minus 4 squared. But that's just for any point. We need this to be specific to our problem. So we need to either substitute y or x with another way of rewriting this formula or this equation. Well, we could solve for y, in which case then we would have y is equal to one half the quantity 2x, or we could solve for x, in which case we would have one half y squared is equal to x. So two different equivalent ways of writing this coordinate system, right? And when we do that, we can substitute either in for x or y. Well, in this case, I chose to do that for x. You could choose to do that for y if you wanted to. That is the way the notes did it. They used y. But from here, all we want to do is minimize this value, right? So we're going to take the derivative of all of this. Then we're going to set that derivative equal to 0. Then we're going to solve. That's it. That, that, that's all we're doing from here on out. Um, that said, I will let you all do this on your own. Um, I did set this up a little bit different than the way the book did. In looking at it, I can see where there will be some headaches along the way. But I think it's a good way of setting up the problem just to see an alternative approach. So, with all of this being said, I will let you all go. Uh, I don't have anything else for y'all today. There are a couple problems, like I said, in the homework about this stuff. And really, this is just stuff that you learn it by doing it, honestly. It, it's stuff that, with optimization, it, it's honestly just going to be easier to do it. Um, you're not going to understand it otherwise. And the reason why is because it's a type of thinking that is unique to each problem. There's a general method, like we've seen here. Identify what it is you're trying to do. Look at what you have, what you know, and then consider the approaches to use what you know to solve the problem. In this case, using what you know meant rewriting x or y in terms of 
the uh, equation that you're given, right? So this is just one example, but that approach of look at what you are being asked, look at what you know, and use what you know to set up the problem to answer what you're being asked. That's the approach here. And for that reason, it's not the same across the board. They're, every unique problem will have a unique setup. But that setup will have this flow to it. And the actual solution will look a little different. I hope that makes sense to everybody. I'm not sure that it did. I'm not sure that it makes sense to me. Um, <laughs> but if y'all have any questions, by all means, shoot me an email. Drop by office hours. Um, remember, you do have a test this Friday. You do have an exam this Friday. Let me say that again. You have an exam this Friday. Hey, guys. Hey, you guys. You have an exam this Friday. Do not forget it. Awesome. Have a, uh, a good rest of your week, and see you all Friday.